Okay. We'll give him some time. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Planning Advisory Committee for uh, Tuesday, May 11, for the Town of Quis Pam Sis. We'll move on to item two. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Mark? Approve. So move. Darren? Second. All in favor? Brenda? Brenda, aye. Aye. John? Kendall? Aye. Brent? Brent? Aye. All in favor? Motion carried. Item three, disclosures of interest. None being, we'll move on to item four, approval of previous minutes. Uh, there's an a, a, a adjust, adjustment to the minutes on... Uh, Please note, there's a correction to the following minute. Notice the decision for the lots in Maple Ridge Estates as follows. Lot 21 is three meters below center line grade of the street. Variance should be four meters. So with that adjustment, uh, can I have a motion to approve the previous minutes, please? Darren? So moved. Got a seconder on that. Kendall? I'll second. All in favor? Brenda? Aye. Mark? Aye. John? Kendall? Aye. Brent? Aye. Mark? You could say Aye. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Motion carried. Item five, the business arise, arising from previous, from, from minutes. Can I have a motion to receive and file, please? Brenda? So moved. Brent? Second. All in favor? Mark? Oh, Mark? Aye. Darren? Aye. Is John on? John? Can you hear us? Okay. Kendall? Aye. Brent? Oh, you vote your motion today, anyway. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. A motion carried. Item six unfinished business. Item 6A, 5 Estale Avenue. Are the applicants online? Yes. Okay, the applicants are online. Uh, Jennifer, you want to give us an update on that, please? Review. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we're looking at five to Esdale. This is the third time that this file has been brought forward to PAC, and I'm pleased to say that the location survey that has been provided by uh, provided of the property identifies all of the structures as being in compliance with the zoning bylaw. PAC can now focus on the original intent of the application, a 4.5 meter lot width variance and a 169 square meter lot variance. Staff have no further concerns with this application. Thank you. Uh, could you please unmute the applicants and members of 5 Estale, you would have received the same package in the mail we did. Is there anything you'd like to add or discuss prior to members of PAC or the public asking you questions? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, good. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Uh, any members of PAC have questions for the applicant? Brenda? Uh, mine is more of a clarification with the town. What we're looking for tonight is that just an uh, approval to relocate the fences and the accessory buildings, or is that to, got to do with the uh, new um, construction? Through 
through you, Mr. Chair. Um, this has to do with the previous, the, the original request, which was for the, um, to allow for the construction for the, the, uh, the, uh, the lot with, yes, for the, for the addition. That is correct. It is not to do with the fences and the, the structures. Uh, that they have provided a survey uh, um, indicating where they will be located so that they are in compliance with the bylaw. And uh, they are seeking, um, I'm not sure, some sort of insurance that, with their home ownership that will go back and, and pay for the building permits that are required for those, those buildings. Uh, yes, more questions. Uh, the th one of the things, too, that we had in our recommendations is that a couple of members of staff enter the home to make sure that there's only one dwelling and one in the garage that they're adding to. Uh, I don't see where that has been uh, followed through th with. And I also have a question about one of the things that they wanted was a second driveway onto that property. And I don't see anything here that covers either of those things. So I would let the staff uh, report. Can I just add? Uh, just hang on. We're going to talk to Jennifer first here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you, Mr. Chair, um, the driveway would not be allowed because it's an easement, so I've already discussed this. Um, and previously, the previous uh, report that I submitted did talk about the, us going to the property. Now, we were allowed into only a certain section of the house, but it was because of COVID restrictions. Okay, Brenda. Okay, uh, yes, I have a concern with that because I think some members of staff uh, could go in with masks on gloves and check out that establishment because one of the complaints that we were receiving was that there was already more than one residence in that main part of the house and that there have been different rentals like possibly Airbnb and things going on. So um, I'm holding firm with that decision uh, before I would support this is that uh, staff has to go into the house and make sure there's only one residence. And anyway, so we'll see how that plays out with the rest of council. Brent? Mr. Chair, I do believe, and going with what Brenda's commented on, is there not already two civic addresses there? Does the garage not have a civic address and the house has a civic address? And now putting the granny suite on, does that not make a third resident? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there is a five and a five A um, on the building. Um, the plans that they have submitted show that it will only be two residences. So without being able to get into the building to, yeah. to look at it physically, um, I have to take it uh, as the, the value that they're presented in the plans. For the 5 s is a single or a two-family dwelling, by adding a granny suite, does it now become a three-family dwelling is my question. We already have two residents there, a five and a five A. Is the granny suite become the third? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I guess we could look at it as being a third dwelling unit, although the, the zoning bylaw, we could look at it as being a two family dwelling with an accessory dwelling. Uh, that's also a possibility. But again, as Brenda said, without being able to get into the house and actually physically see, um, I have to take the plans that they've submitted uh, showing that this new addition is gonna be the secondary dwelling and, and the primary residence that's there now would be the primary. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Tanya McKellar. I was able to 
finally get connected. I think John's still trying. Oh, I'm fine. I'm on. Oh, you are. Okay, great. Sorry that we couldn't be together. He's traveling for work. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that saying, any further questions? Like, is there any... Do we know if that's going to make it a third or not? I can answer it. I've been waiting for you guys to ask me. Okay, please do. Okay. So the house is a house fully open, workable between both the house and the 5A that you guys call it, en suite. We're only looking to make our bedroom and our bathroom larger. Basically, nothing's changing. We're just looking for more square footage for our ensuite for ourselves with our stepdaughter. There's never been a discussion of a third unit. There will never be a third unit. We have no problems for you guys coming for a walkthrough. It's not an Airbnb. And it'd be easy. We're not looking for a second driveway. So everything you guys are suggesting that could be still out there, that all can be squandered by simple no second driveway ever. Not looking for a third unit, not looking for independent electrical entrances to each unit. We don't want it as a two family. We just want the ones we can have to be obviously a little more square footage for my wife and I because we have four uh, grandkids and stepdaughter living there. And we have it totally open. We share our laundry together. You know, we share the house together. And you guys are welcome to come back. And I realize she's a nurse. During the time, we weren't able to get all the way through our house in light of COVID, but we absolutely, with masks, we can get you back in and get you through it. It's not a problem. All right. Thank you. Any further questions from PAC members to the applicant? Mark? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, through you here. So at the, at the end of the day, what is this? Uh, house going to be uh, 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 name for? Is it going to be a one unit home, a two unit home, or what? What? And I'm just trying to understand here what at the end, if the renovation takes place or the expansion takes place, what is going to be the final uh, say on this property? Is it two unit, one unit, one family, two family? In our eyes, it's a house with one suite. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you, Mr. Chair. The house, that the way that the plans were presented to staff was that at the end of the project, the building will be big enough to contain two dwelling units from our perspective. Um, it would be easily uh, reconfigured into a two-dwelling home. That's why we're here today. However, at the end of the day, when, as the McKellers have said, when they're finished constructing it, they are going to have, it's an open concept home, kind of, where if they're going to have two families living in it, it's very open. We're planning for it in the future for when the McKellers don't own it or somebody else has bought in it and wants to turn it into a two-family home. It's very easily done because of the size and the way it's laid out. And that's why we're requesting that it be recognized by committee as being a two-family home. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, and and a two-family home would be a, uh, meet all the requirements in that area. I'm correct. Through you, Mr. Chair, it meets all of the requirements except for. It requires a 4.5 meter lot width variance. So the width of the lot is not wide enough to accommodate a two family home the way that it the, the lot is now. So they're requesting a 4.5 meter lot width variance and also a lot size. It needs to be uh, 1,330 square meters. Uh, and they don't have that they because it's a single family lot and um, they will. Re they, re they need 169 square meters of variance for lot size area to accommodate the two-family home as well. So they do. Re uh, 
Yeah, if we approve the variances as requested and, and, and things like that, so the owner can sell the property if, if he wants to naturally, yeah, and then the bar could make it a two separate unit completely if he wants to. But this is not what the bar, this is not what the homeowner is saying today. Am I correct? Okay, so I have some concern with that. Okay, thank you. Brent? So my question is, with the staff report or the, the drawings that were provided, the homeowner is just saying en suite, the drawings are saying granny suite, which is a big difference. So what, you know, the plans that were submitted to the town are saying granny, homeowner is saying en suite, that's a big difference between, if we go to granny, then you're back into three potential people that are three potential family situations, if it's an ensuite, then that changes everything. So my question is, are the plans mislabeled or are we being misguided? Yeah, look, looking at the plan, I, the plan does not, itself does not dictate it's a granny suite. Uh, mm, no, that's the title of the, up top, isn't it? This is Tanya McKellar. I can answer that. I've always called it an ensuite. I don't know the difference between a granny suite and an ensuite. It's just, I like the word ensuite. But it was just meant for us to help with raising of the children and being right there on the same property. We're not looking to have anything else other than more square footage because we do have other grandchildren that like to have sleepovers. Um, and we have no problem, like, if we sell... 15 years from now, we end up, you know, having to go to a nursing home or special care home. We have no problem signing something saying that we will sell it as a one family as well. That's not our, our intentions are just having a little bit of space for us, give our daughter some privacy. She's only 41 years old. She's raising three babies. She's a nurse. She works shift work. And life is hard. I mean, she has a, a, an ex that lives on the street. He's no help to her at all. We're her family. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dwight, you want to speak in there, Dwight, please? Uh, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So just, just to go back and to, to step back, and let's look at the way we approach it in terms of the zoning bylaw and the codes. So the bylaw says we look at it in terms of dwelling units. So if we look at the definition of a dwelling unit, basically if you have the elements of a kitchen or kitchen facilities, a bathroom and a bedroom, okay, that is defined in our bylaw as basically being the living space or a dwelling unit and a separate entrance. So in this particular case, you do have a separate entrance into both uh, dwelling units. There is a doorway that can go between both dwelling units. So if we take away the terminology of whether it's an ensuite or an in-law suite or whatever it might be, if we look at it from the definition of a dwelling unit, then this property has two dwelling units. So what the application, as, as Jennifer has alluded to, what has come to us is a plan to expand the square footage of the second dwelling unit. This property right now is currently assessed by Service of Brunswick identifies as it having two dwelling units. So that's not that's not sort of what we're trying to establish whether whether it has two dwelling units. It has all the elements of two dwelling units. Okay. So right now, based on the information that we have, as by definition of a dwelling unit, this property is not in compliance. So what's being asked is they're asking to expand on the on the second dwelling unit that has an entrance and the entrance is actually labeled 5B. So to create more square footage. There is, like I said, there's a door that connects both both dwelling units. So if we look at it from that, if as as Jennifer's indicated, if we say, okay, this property gets sold tomorrow, I'm not saying it will, but if it did, somebody else buys it, if they simply put up uh, a door, uh, close the door in, 
then both of these units have no connection. So they're actually two family, they're two dwelling units. Right now, the property does not have 35 meters of lot frontage or lot width that's required. So the, the request is in order for us to issue this permit for them to expand on the second dwelling unit, the property has to be brought in com to compliance. So as we went through this process, there were other, there were other things that were found that have been addressed. Now it's before PAC, whether they wish to grant this request for a lot with variance to bring the property into compliance so the building permit can be issued to expand on the existing dwelling unit. Whether there's a third dwelling unit or not, that's going to come out in time because Service of Brunswick, this is how we get this information. Unless applications come to the town and when we review these applications, it actually indicates the second dwelling unit or the, the facilities are there to support a second dwelling unit. That's how we determine at a, at a town level, staff level. We also have the ability and we get that information from Service of Brunswick that indicates a property has, has multiple dwelling units. So right now we have information saying that there is a second dwelling unit. To our knowledge, the second dwelling unit that's being defined is 5B and then five is the main property. So there's the, the request is simply the property needs to be brought into compliance. A lot with various needs to be granted. Whether there's a third dwelling unit or not, that's going to come out in time. Thanks, thanks, Dwight. <clears throat> so you're saying that uh, at Service New Brunswick, it's already registered as two dwelling unit. That's it's already to the, done. To the information, to the information that we receive from the Service New Brunswick. Yeah. So uh, the variance tonight is to ensure that it meets the bylaw requirements of of Town of Quest Pam to ensure that it <clears throat> still meets the two dwelling unit by having that those variances. That is correct. Okay. Any questions from further questions from PAC? Mark? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The question is for Mr. and Mrs. McKellar here. Uh, I understand the second driveway, it, it's not in, in place anymore, but do you have any intention to make the existing driveway any bigger than what it is today, or are you going to stay at the same size what it is today? Want me to answer that, Danielle? Yeah? Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, given the uh, through this process, we have learned a great deal with obviously the new survey, meeting the compliance of the town of Quispan Fisk, dealing with you know uh, some restrictions of, of of our fencing and baby barns infringing on uh, you know on the easement of of what's already been laid out. So the quick answer is no, we cannot expand our driveway because it would not comply with the city bylaws under the restrictions that we already have in place. I don't know if that makes sense to you or if that, if that clarifies what I'm saying. I'm not sure if there's any bylaw against that. That's maybe Jennifer can help us out with this. Yeah. Well, there is a bylaw that the driveway in order to expand, it would expand into the already the the restrictions that we have, you know what I mean, based upon the survey that they had laid out for us and state. So I can't expand the driveway. Um, and, and of course, that also led to us understanding uh, through this process, you know, I've got a utility trailer that I no longer leave there. Um, I had two work vehicles. One was a truck, one was a car. I only have my car there. You know, we, we've, we've learned a lot through this process and we've really made efforts to comply with all them little things that we did not know before. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark? Yeah, okay, so just to be clear here, you have no intention to uh, make the existing driveway any bigger than what it is today? That's correct. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? Is there anyone in the audience or online willing to speak for or against this item? Could you please come up and take the podium and state your name for the record, please? 
Alana McInerney. Alana McInerney. McInerney. Where's your, what, where are you what, located? Three Esdale. Okay. Could you please talk about your it concerns or approval or? Sure. So I still have the same concerns that I had originally um, as far as the resale of the surrounding properties. Um, the new construction is very close to my property line. Um, I have concerns about water. Um, with change of grade uh, from the new construction and also just additional water consumption of a two-family dwelling because um, we're all on wells. Um, as far as parking is concerned, right now they're parking uh, on my property in, in some cases because there's typically, you know, five cars in the driveway. So since the property lines are clear now, um, they're often parking on my property. Um, I'm concerned about the discretion of the homeowners regarding any rental applicants because we have had trouble with uh, their past renters. Um, I did want to make sure that the new construction, like the, the foundation that's already in place, is within the side lot variance. And that the 30% structure um, that was called out on a, in a previous meeting, that, that they're still in compliance with that as well. So I mean, right now, when their new construction started, um, trees from my property were taken out and um, gravel was put down so that they would have a parking spot. So that, like, that's not an option going forward from my perspective. So I'd like to understand how that's going to be addressed. Okay. May I answer? Uh, I'm gonna reach out to Jennifer or Dwight on that first. Sure. Jennifer? Or? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I did miss one of the points that you wanted clarification on. If you could review those for me. Um, you wanted to know if the side setback was going to be met. There's only a three meter side yard setback and it will be met. Now I missed the other one that you'd mentioned. There was a mention on uh, one of the previous meetings around a 30% structure. Okay. Out. Okay. I still have the concerns around yeah. the, the you mentioned about the parking I'm not sure are they where the driveway is now are they parking outside that driveway or they, they put crushed gravel um, to like on the on the left hand side okay. of the driveway yeah which is my property okay is that oh, oh okay thank you Brenda? Well, I have a question for the lady that made oh. a presentation. Back up, please? Sorry about that. My question is, I know that you have problems. Um, I, so I, you know, I think good fences make good neighbors. If we said that they had to put a fence on your property, um, maybe a metal one right on the property line, a nice one, would that make you feel more secure that they're not coming on your property with their driveways and things like that? If that was a condition, if the rest of this is allowed to go ahead. A, a, a fence would help, but there's also concerns with the noise because they're parking so close to, like, on my property. Um, you know, our, our, my bedroom, my daughter's bedroom are on that side of the house. Right. So we're, we're constantly being woken up <laughs> if they come in late. And so there's a noise concern with the number of cars that are there, as well as just they're parking on my property. So. The, the erosion in your property. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So, is there anyone else online willing to speak for or against this item? 
third and final time. Is there anyone online willing to speak for or against this item? We'll turn that back over, over to the applicant for a couple of uh, responses to the, the neighbor. Hi, this is Tanya, and I cannot apologize enough for the tenants that were supposed to purchase that house. And again, they were not vetted. I thought they were vetted through the broker and the real estate agent. And again, I cannot stress how sorry I am for such a commotion that they had caused. I know that the police were there on a regular basis. It was just, it's, it was awful. I wouldn't want my own kids or my grandkids living in that situation. So again, I do apologize for that. The second thing is, I just have a question for the town. In between our properties, is there not a three meter easement? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there's a lot line that separates your properties. I think what you're referring to is the three meter setback that's required from structures to that property line. So each, uh, each homeowner is responsible to stay a certain distance away from the property line. Um, and, but there's, there's no easement in between them. The easement that's on your property is, which one's three, can you tell me? It's on the other side. So yes, it is on the other side. There is that uh, utility easement there, but um, that's it. Okay, because I'm, I'm sorry, I, you know, when we had dug everything up, we had so much marshy in that area that everything was sinking and we had no idea that when we purchased this property that we were told those hedges were our property line. So we had no idea. So this um, survey that we had done has really um, given us a lot of education on that. And I do apologize, the crushed rock was already put down, but it was very marshy and wet there. Um, but I was also still under the understanding that right up to the hedges is the easement for the two, for the town if they had to cut through the properties. I didn't realize that the crushed rock on our side and the hedges on our side are still part of her property. So, and again, if, if I'm wrong, I, you know, I can, all I can do is apologize and, and uh, yeah, we could put a, a piece of metal fencing across there. I just wanna make sure that we're putting it in the right place because we had to go after a title insurance to move the barn, move the fences, do all this work that's supposed to be coming up. So. I just want to make sure when I do put it in the right place that it is in the right place and I'm not having to get my knuckles wrapped. Can I add? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I just want to add too that, uh, that uh, the fencing that we're working with with the title insurance is actually uh, an enclosed fencing. It's not an open metal fencing. Uh, it would be properly installed but it literally would be a seclusion fence that blocks our privacy, obviously, and gives them privacy. I would suggest that if we are building a fence, you know, obviously to separate the two properties, it should be a privacy fence because this will also kill whatever noise that, uh, that they'd be concerned about. I will tell you that right now, today, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, they can come and investigate as many times as they want. We're dealing with four cars. That's what we're dealing with. And in a household, four cars is not extreme between the call it the ensuite and ourselves. Our grandson has a car, stepdaughter has a car, my wife has a car, and I have a car. My trailers, my truck, all of that has been taken out of there specifically because of the awareness of what we're dealing with. And I can assure you, you will not have any more than four cars in that driveway. And we can easily maintain those four cars in our driveway without infringing on uh, this uh, neighbor's property line, and rightfully so. But I would move that the, the fence should be privacy, not an open fence area, if she agrees. If she prefers a steel fence as opposed to a privacy fence, then we, I would consider that just out of being neighborly but I think she would prefer, as much as I would prefer, a privacy fence giving us both privacy from each other. Okay, thank you. 
Any further questions from PAC members? Any member of PAC would like to put a motion for or against with terms and conditions? Member of PAC, like to put a motion for or against with terms and conditions. We're granting the variance. Brenda? Um, I would put a motion for, but it's not about the variance. I would put a motion for that PAC directs staff to undertake infections, inspections at S5S Dale, PID 302. Two seven six six eight to determine if the number of dwelling units contained in the single family home given that the service New Brunswick currently identifies it at two dwelling units. Do that inspection and then we would make the decision if they're going to do the variance. That would be my motion. Do we have a seconder on that motion? We don't have a seconder, so that motion gets defeated. Is there a motion, another motion on the floor from PAC members? Staff, it's uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. It's in regards to uh, rentals, and it seemed like, uh, is there a way to prevent any short-term rentals from occurring at this location? It seems like some of the concern was in regards to rentals and uh, who was renting. And I guess maybe if there was a way to, and maybe there's not a way to limit rentals or like Airbnb rentals and things like that. Through Jennifer? you, Mr. Chair. There is nothing currently in our zoning bylaw that allows us to um, monitor or uh, govern short-term rentals. So there, there's really nothing there yet. Uh, the zoning bylaw is being reviewed and rewritten. <laughs> and there may be something in future bylaw that would uh, give us that power, but currently there's nothing. Could one of the conditions be that uh, this property is not allowed to be utilized as a short-term rental? Through you, Mr. Chair, I expect that you could include that as a condition. If it could be enforceable would be the my other question. How would that be enforced other than, I guess, finding out that there's an Airbnb rental online and then we could go investigate? So yeah, I expect you could. I don't know if Dwight wants to weigh in on this. Dwight, do you have any response? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's not, it's not something that the town has undertaken or engaged and we're, we're getting into uh, all of a sudden we're looking at what people are doing in terms of who they're renting their properties to and those types of things. So right now we have nothing in a bylaw that would allow us to do that. Um, what I think it's important that we, as I've said before, is you look back to say what is being requested. And from a planning perspective, we're looking at this in terms of a request to expand on uh, an existing building. So from a planning perspective, we're looking at it in terms of compliance with the zoning bylaw provisions that are currently in place. So that would be setbacks. It would be a uh, lot occupancy in terms of not more being more than 30% structures occupying the, the lot. It would be things like building heights. And so we're looking at all those things in terms of compliance from a planning perspective. Um, the land use is there in terms of the permitted use of the zoning by all. So whether it's one family or there's two dwelling units, the bylaw says that you can have a two family or two dwelling units in this zone. 
Uh, so it comes down to looking at it from the lot size. So the question that went before PAC is that we were establishing there's two dwelling units. In order to have two dwelling units, you have to have 35 meters of lot frontage. The property doesn't have lot frontage. So the application has come to PAC to say, do you feel that this is a reasonable request? Is it desirable for use of the property? And is it in keeping with intent of the bylaw? So the intent of the bylaw was to allow multiple, at least up to two dwelling units in a single family zone, R1. Is the request of four and a half meters, I believe, is that a reasonable variance request to allow this use? Um, there are other bylaws that are in place that will be an act that we could that could be used to address some of the other issues. So if you have a noise complaint, then there's a noise bylaw that gets enforced by the police or gets enforced by the bylaw enforcement department. In terms of parking, if you're going to put another parking or another driveway here. You have to come back to PAC because the bylaw says you can only have one driveway per 30 meters of lot frontage. They, they don't. They, in order to do that, they would have to come back to PAC. Um, parking, you cannot. You can't park on the street. So if you park on the streets and there's multiple vehicles, again, that's a traffic bylaw enforcement issue. So there are other bylaws that that provide provisions to allow us to to address some of those concerns. Some of them from. From a bylaw enforcement issues, some are from a police perspective. But the application, the request that's before PAC is strictly a zoning bylaw planning issue. Is the request for a four and a half meter variance to allow two dwelling units on this property a reasonable, desirable request that is in keeping with the intent of the bylaw? That's what's being asked. Thanks for the clarification, Dwight. Appreciate that. Brent? Chairman, I'll make a motion uh, based on the conversation we just had. Stuff. I'll make the motion PAC approve four decimal 4.5 meter length lot width variance to section eight C2 of zoning bylaw 038 and a 169 169 square meter lot size variance to section 8C1 of the same bylaw for 5S Dale Drive, PID 30027. 668, subject to the following terms and conditions. One, the fence and accessory buildings are relocated to the locations identified on the site plan layout as shown in survey DWG 210330, sorry, OVA, subject to the, submitted to the town on April 26, 2021, prior to the issuance of a building permit. Two, a building permit is issued prior to construction. Three, a privacy fence is established between 5S Dale and 3S Dale. And four, 5S Dale remediates the damage that was done to the lawn of 3S Dale. I'll second that. On the question? On the question, Dwight, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I'm not sure if in the conditions, but I will make a recommendation in terms of the conditions because there are some other items that need to bring be addressed to bring this into compliance. Um, a condition that PEC may wish to consider is that those items be brought into the, 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 the shed and the fence and those other items be addressed prior to the issuing of a building permit for the expansion of the the existing yeah that, that's what we said that dwight that's okay i just wanted one. to clarify thank you that was number one okay thank you okay you're welcome on the question brenda uh just uh i feel that staff should be looking at to see if there's not already two uh, residents in that house and less than that is they go in and check that out um i cannot support this motion. Thank you, Brenda. Kendall? Yay, in favor. Yay. Karen? In 
second it. John, you online? John? No. And Brenda, yes. is it, Brenda's an A? I'm an A, yeah. Thank you. Motion carried. On that four to five, in four to five business days, you're gonna have a letter in the mail uh, with your approval. Please work with the town and your neighbor to get all those uh, I's dotted and T's crossed and uh, best of luck on your uh, development. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll definitely do that. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to item uh, 6B. That was to rat ratify uh, an issue we had la a resolution last week, last meeting. The Planning Advisory Committee grant the side set setback variance of 1.2 decimal meters for the right side of property at 123 Gondola Boulevard, PID 67298, subject to the following. I'm in the wrong one, sorry. <laughs> Jay's losing it. The resolution, Planning Advisory Committee ratified the email poll conducted on April 29th with the amended motion stating the following, that the Planning Advisory Committee supports council to amend, amend the development agreement for the Elm Tree Multiple Residential Apartment Development at 258 Hampton Road. Subject to the following, that all 10 conditions of the notice of decision dated June 16th, 2020 are still adhered to. So that, that, when that was voted, we voted that through an email poll and everyone has agreed on that. So can we ratify that decision? Motion to ratify that decision, please. Darren? So moved. Brent? Second. Brenda? Yay. Mark? Whoops. Mark? Yay. Kendall? Yay. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to new business 7A. Three Deer Path Court. Jennifer, can you lead us into this item, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, three deer path. The applicant is looking to construct a deck on the southeast corner of their house. In order to place a deck in this desired location, a 1.5 meter variance is required to the side yard setback. Uh, staff uh, wish to update the conditions of approval, uh, however, before we introduce the applicant, to include that the property line is clearly identified prior to construction. And other than that, staff have no further concerns. Thank you. The applicant, could you please state your name for the record? Chris Barry. Chris, you would have received the uh, same application uh, we did in the mail. Is there anything you'd like to add or, or discuss prior to questions from uh, PAC members or the members of the public? No. Are you okay with the amended uh, uh, suggestion that the uh, Jennifer Jarvis and the planning tech had about clearly identifying the lot line to so that the deck's not infringed on the other property? What do they mean, clearly identify? Like, what do you need to see? Through you, Mr. Chair, you would need to locate the pins and run a, a rope so you basically know exactly where the property line is at the time of construction. That's fine. Is that okay with yep. you? Okay. Uh, any members of PAC have any questions for the applicant? None being. Anyone in the audience or online willing to speak for or against this item? Is there anyone online or in the audience willing to speak for or against this item? Third and final time, is there anyone in the audience or online willing to speak for or against this item? None being. Would a member of PAC like to put a motion for or against with terms and conditions, please? Mark. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll put a motion for it to approve the one decimal five, one point five meter side yard setback from the town zoning bylaw 038 section 8E1B to permit construction of a deck along the southeast lot line at three deck path court PID number 3462227 with the following term and condition. A, one, no further projection 
and to the setback are permitted beyond the 1.5 meter variance. And two, a building permit is obtained prior to the construction. And three, a, uh, the property line are clearly identified prior to construction. Thank you. Do have a second on that? I'll second it. On the question, all in favor? Brenda? Yay. Is it a yay? Yeah, yeah. no, no. It's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Get you out. Darren? Aye. John? Aye. Brent. Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. Five to seven business days. You have a letter in the mail. Best of luck and get your building permit and that lot line identified and good luck on your on your deck. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7B. Lot side variance, Elliott Road. Jennifer, could you please introduce this item, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 98 Elliott Road, the applicant is proposing the addition of a two-story attached to garage with a secondary dwelling unit located on the second floor. A lot size variance of 365 square meters is required to permit the proposed development as presented. Staff received information from Mr. Warren of Live Tree Construction Incorporated concerning the requirements that triggered the need for improved sewage capacity. In an email he received from Tim Brown, plumbing inspector with the Department of Justice and Public Safety, it was suggested that the additional living space and extra water using devices alone do not necessarily trigger the need for improved sewage capacity if overall occupancy on the lot are not, uh, are not increased. The present occupant suggests that the proposed new space will be used as office space and that occupancy will not change. However, the proposed new space does provide all the elements required for a secondary dwelling um, unit or a short-term rental. From a planning perspective, we would need to be aware of potential system loads in terms of septic system at full potential capacity. Therefore, staff are recommending that the applicants enter into a hold harmless agreement with the town. This agreement will waive the town of any and all responsibilities regarding any septic system failure and subsequent damages to subject properties and or any lands impacted by the septic failure in the event it is determined the number of dwelling units increased beyond one or a home occupation is being operated from the property. Staff wish to update the conditions of approval to include the following. Enter into a hold harmless agreement with the town of Quispansis, waiving the town of any and all responsibilities regarding any septic system failure located at 98 Elliott Road and any subsequent damages to the subject property and or any lands impacted by a septic failure associated with the ex extended land use beyond the current capacity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is the applicant here? Yes. Applicants sir. online. Could you please state your name for the record, please? Dave Stonehouse. And Kara Stonehouse. Okay, you would have uh, received the same package we did in the mail, and you would have heard uh, Jennifer's uh, up update. Is there anything you'd like to add or discuss prior to member prior to questions from the PAC or members of the public? No. Are you okay we're happy with to answer questions? Of course. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, we're happy. I'm sorry. We're just happy to we're happy to answer questions if there are any, but we don't have anything to say right now. Okay. Uh, does anyone from PAC have any questions for the applicant? My my question is, based on the layout of the second floor with offices and meeting rooms. Etc. Is the long term intention, long term intention to move your business from uptown to eventually to your home and become a home based business? No, it's not my intention. However, 
I have been working my business during the pandemic from home, as most people have been. I should explain that my business is a consulting business. It's not a high traffic business at all. At most, I would meet with a couple of people every now and then. And, and for my part, I work from home and have for the last decade. So I, I don't have a, a dedicated office space. Um, and now I share an open loft with my husband, which is also open to a living space with our two children. So as you can imagine, working long hours, sharing this open space with everyone is made us want to build this extra space. Thank you. Any, any further questions for the applicant from uh, members of the PAC? Is there anyone online or in the audience willing to speak for or against this item? Is there anyone online willing to speak for or against this item? Third and final time, is there anyone online willing to speak for or against this item? None being, would a member of PAC like to put a motion for or against with terms and conditions? Kendall? I recommend that PAC approve the 365 square meter lot size variance from section 25J2 of the zoning bylaw 030 for 90 Elliott Road, PID 30229660 subject to the following terms and conditions. <clears throat> Number one, correspondence is received from the plumbing inspector with the Department of Justice and Public Safety indicating they're, they are in favor of the proposed lot size variance. Any conditions of the approval from the Department of Justice and Public Safety will be forwarded to the town prior to the issuing of a building permit. Number two, building permit is issued prior to construction and number three, the applicant enter into a hold harmless agreement with the town to remove any and all responsibilities and would like to utilize the remaining words that staff has recommended. Thank you, Kendall. Can I have a seconder for that? John, I'll second. Okay. On the question? On the question, Mr. Chair, Dwight, uh, we add not just responsibility but liability in the whole harmless agreement is that for the home harm the hold harmless agreement uh dwight that, that was correct is that okay with the motion motion yeah that's great um, actually i'd prefer to use uh jennifer's words as opposed to mine in the third one but i just can't recall the exact wording <laughs> okay thank you second you're okay with that John, yeah. you okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay. On the question, Brent? My only question is, again, based on the layout of the garage and has a boardroom, two offices, et cetera, should we put a condition in that with regards to home-based businesses, only allowing two people to be working from, based on the town of Crispin, based on the town's bylaw, with regards to home-based businesses, should that be a condition of this motion based on the layout of the garage with offices and a boardroom? And... Dwight, is there any issue around that with, uh, with what uh, Brent's saying? The applicants have indicated that their the use right now is the fact that both of them are working from home and Mrs. Stack and Stonehouse. Has said that um, she worked home from a decade, and it's, it's um, David has been working since the pandemic, and it's consulting, and he's indicated right now and then that there's a meeting an individual. So, again, if we look at the home occupations, home occupations when there's actually business transactions, people coming and buying products, and your traffic increases, and those types of things. So, any home occupation would actually have to go through PAC as an approval. Um, condition at this stage could be to the extent of any home occupation if it's determined that it needs to go through PAC as with approvals in accordance with the zoning bylaw. Thank you. Is that worth adding, Kendall? 
I'm okay with it. John, you okay with that? He seconded. Yes, that. I am. Yeah. Okay. On the question? All in favor? Brenda? Aye. Mark? Aye. Darren? Aye. Brent? Aye. Motion carried. In five to seven business days, you'll have a letter in the mail. Best of luck, and please work with the town. And if you're going to have an intention of having that whole uh, home-based business, please come back to, please apply to the town. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 7C. Attached attach garage on the on Gondola Boulevard. Uh, so Jennifer, can you introduce that property? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 123 Gondola Boulevard. The applicant is requesting a 1.2 meter side yard variance to accommodate the construction of a 7.3 meter, 24 foot wide, attached garage. Staff wish to update the conditions of approval to include the following, that the property line is clearly identified prior to construction, and other than that, staff have no further concerns. Thank you. Yeah, applicant, please state your name for the record. Harvey. Harvey, uh, you would receive the same package we did in the mail. Is there anything you'd like to add or discuss prior to members of the PAC or public asking you a few questions? Nope. All right. Any members of PAC have any questions for Harvey? Mark? Okay. <laughs> any? All right. Any questions for Harvey? Is there anyone in the audience or online willing to speak for or against this item? Is there anyone online or in the audience willing to speak for or against this item? Third and final time. Is there anyone in the audience or online willing to speak for or against this item? None being, would a member of PAC like to put a motion for or against with terms and conditions, please? Hey, Darren, it's John. I'll put a motion forward. That the planning advisory committee grant the side yard setback variance of one decimal two meters for the right side of the property at 123 Gondola Boulevard, PID 67298, subject to the following conditions. One, drainage is to be managed on site with no impacts to adjacent properties. Dra drainage spouts must be directed so that water is contained to the subject lot. Two, a building permit is issued prior to construction. Thank you, John. Hmm? Jennifer? And the third condition, uh, Mr. Chair, that the property line is clearly identified prior to construction. Are you okay with that, John? Yes. Okay, thank you. Seconder? I'll second that. On the question? Brent? No, no question. Okay, sorry. All in favor? Brenda? Aye. Mark? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Brent? Aye. Motion carried. Five to seven business days. You have a letter in the mail. Please work with the town to get all your permits in place and best of luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Move on to item, item eight. Can I have a motion to receive and file, please? Brent? So moved. Brenda? Second it. All in favor? Mark? Aye. Darren? Aye. Kendall? Aye. John? Aye. Motion carried. Item Nine, adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a seconder on that. Mark. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> motion carried. Meeting is adjourned.